Mixing with Mike, plug-in of the week is the Sound Toys CQ. Uh, C-S-I-E is short for Siemens. This is uh, Siemens EQ, which actually was a vintage EQ from the 1960s, made in Germany by the Siemens Corporation, the W295B. Uh, essentially, it's a solid state EQ. It uh, is a uh, what they would call a cassette that would get uh, fit into a console. Uh, the console that it was put into was the Citral console, S-I-T-R-A-L. And um, what was in unique about this particular transition time was that a lot of the components from this era in the 60s were switching over from valve or tube-based uh, gain stages into solid state gain stages. So now we were shifting from tubes to transistors. And uh, so the transistors had a unique sound. You see a lot of this stuff with like the uh, TG12345 EMI components uh, that were built in that era and the TG12345 console from that era. That was the transition from Abbey Road's uh, red series consoles into uh, into their solid state consoles and you started to see some of this technology come out uh, more and more into compressors like the Pi compressor and the Helios channel and stuff like that or Helios EQ excuse me so this was um, the uh, German version of this and it's pretty transparent um, sounding EQ it's pretty cool basically what you have is a low end shelf a high end shelf and then you have a mid-band presence band uh, for EQ, and it's pretty much that simple. Um, now, Sound Toys does not release a ton of plugins, so when they do come out with something, it's actually, it's usually, uh, all their stuff is really amazing, and it's always really cool. So I'm going to zoom in here, and we'll kind of focus this. I just have this right on the mix bus, but I want you to hear a little bit of it. And there's also a drive control. And I will take a quick look at that. So now the low end, they don't really give you frequencies. It ends up being somewhat of a kind of a, um, a broad slope to a center point that probably ranges in the 100 cycles down to 50 cycle range. So it's leaning much more towards the bassy end. And then on the top end, this will kind of peak out like around 15K or so. So there's no real like numerical specific value that they center uh, the Q on. And uh, in terms of the high frequency shelf, usually it's a 3 dB point um, booster attenuation um, as the center point. But so it's pretty broad and what you get is almost a little bit more um, tilt shelf like or not tilt shelf, but like a tilt for the majority of the EQ. So if we have if we run a run a mix here, what I'm going to do here is um, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, zoom in here just to so we'll focus in on just some music here. I want you to feel a little bit of the low end. Like a real nice real nice warmth on the bottom end without it being too excessive. Like really powerful. And then to balance it off, we have a nice... Top end EQ. And then you have a nice cool kind of mid-band. And you have selectable frequencies here. 700. 100. So you got a really amazing presence with it just on a simple thing. These particular frequencies are very carefully selected. Um, like these are things, uh, for example, just if we were working with uh, just a bass, uh, I can call up a, um, an EQ here just for the bass. So this is just an instantiation on the bass. Uh, and uh, let me just kind of zero it out. I was kind of uh, fooling around with it here. But this is, uh, this is actually something where I can show you that where this EQ and those central frequencies are really powerful. One of the key things like with a lot of bass sounds, like a really good boost point is usually somewhere in like a 700 range because you like allows the bass note to kind of cut through, hits a harmonic that cuts through well on small speakers. And so 
but you'll hear a presence that's not pokey or sharp. Whereas you start to go up higher in frequency, right? You start to get more string noise and that type of thing. And then you could also warm up the top a little bit. Right? And there's something that's really rich about the low end that doesn't ever get money, muddy. Except in the context of the mix. So you can hear how that kind of cuts through. And then if you start to get onto instruments like guitars and keyboards and stuff like that, these mid-range frequencies become good focus points to find a place in the mix to kind of pull them in. So it's the, it's not without thought. Now, a lot of the, these console and the design of these components were originally for broadcast purposes, and that's a lot of what the Siemens uh, work was at that particular time. They designed, it broad, designed broadcast consoles. Um, and this is the cassette cartridge that kind of fits fits into this. The one thing I wanted to just kind of show you here is that there is also an engine uh, for this. I'm going to take this out just to kind of keep the context of the mix here. Also, I still had this on. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up a, a gain stage here, just a simple uh, output trim. And the reason for this is that what we have um, with the EQ here is we have a drive stage at the output, but I'm going to want to counterbalance this output with um, uh, with something on the output stage. So here, if I, if I bring this down, uh, say 6 dB, then uh, what we can do is uh, we can uh, take a listen to this and dr hit the drive here on this a little bit higher. <laughs> This is driving the output electronics of, of the Siemens EQ. So you hear the distortion kind of come in a classic solid state distortion. All right, so when you hear that kind of clipping on the low end like that, that's a classic, um, you know, uh, really like breaking up kind of distortion that's that's like a very common component of uh, working, um, you know, without uh, transistors and 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 uh, the the type of electronics um, that were made at that particular time. So um, that solid state kind of technology. So that distortion characteristic is very true to what those components kind of do. And it also gives you the ability to kind of back off of it to give yourself a little bit more headroom uh, when you're driving it. But it's really cool. I've never worked with the original hardware, so I can't uh, speak to the quality of the emulation and how similar it is to the original. But pretty much uh, Sound Toys has a, a sterling reputation for making some really unique and, and amazing sounding tools and great emulation. So uh, I fully uh, trust that this is cool. And it's great, especially for that low end and that top end uh, and that mid range. Really powerful in its simplicity, uh, just uh, sonically and uh, and its role in any mix. So uh, there you have it. Very cool one. It's the Siemens uh, Q or the CQ uh, from Sound Toys. And uh, that is the Mixing with Mike plugin of the week. <laughs>